and we're right. going to start this. Okay, I think we're going. We even have the audio recording. Uh, it's going out live on our our live feed for the audio. And uh, there's uh, Josh. Let me say hello to him. And hello. So we're going to be. Uh, uh, let me see here. We'll just. Uh, uh, can you hear me, Josh? Okay. Yes, I can hear you fine. There's Josh. And let me also do one other thing, and that's make Josh the uh, co-host so he can let everybody on here. Uh, in fact, uh, he'll probably let Kevin on right now and let Brian Neary on. And uh, yep. I'm, I'm going to go do what I got to do, and you just uh, have everybody do what they're I think doing. I might have missed letting them guys on. There was a box that popped up there that said, Two people in the waiting room view, which I clicked. Well, there you go. But um, then it went away. There's Josh Wheeler. There's Kevin. Well, wait a minute. Are they? I are mean, they co host. You just go admit on Kevin. Yeah, it's, it's not popping up here. So can, let me just see. bring up participants. Part, bring up, let, let me let me look at the, participants again. Yeah, that's what I'm doing here. Hopefully, hmm, something's not right here. Invite? No. No. no oh. uh, Something's not working the way it normally does. At the very top, there's a waiting room. Okay, let's see here. Maybe this might work. Okay, here's an admit. Here's admit, an admit, yeah, admit all. Admit yeah. all. Yeah, there you there go. There we go. Okay, I just want to make well, sure. I think we have some people. A little technical yeah, yeah, difficulty, but we work yeah. right through that. Okay, well, have a nice time. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go take care of business here. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. I'll see you in a little while. Okay. Put your hands right. when you're done. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right, we'll bar. see you in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So there goes AB. You're on with me, Josh Wheeler on Gabnet. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Brian Neary, we have Kevin. So uh, I don't know if there's anything you guys want to talk about, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, I will talk about uh, the 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 illegitimate president of the United States was in town today. So he. Uh, <clears throat> He was in Columbus, Ohio, where I work. I don't live in Columbus. I live uh, outside of Columbus in the real world. I don't live up there in that jungle. But uh, he was in town today in a very, very upscale area community called Johnstown in New Albany. And uh, just outside of this area, uh, some land barons have shown up and bought much of uh, what used to be uh, peaceful farmland. They've decided to bring industry in and uh one of the people that bought up most of that land was uh intel intel was building a very large campus uh within what is also going to be a much larger industrial campus that is going to include several other companies uh one of them that i happen to know about is a competitor of a company that i work for um uh, bear paint is going to be coming to town they're going to put a manufacturing facility in a dsc but the chip building thing was one of the biggest because uh, that is something that is currently built overseas, um, almost, I think, exclusively anymore. And uh, it coming back to the United States, to the Midwest, um, you know, in an industrial way is, uh, is, is big news here for sure all day today and has been for quite some time. We're talking about almost uh, 10,000 jobs is what they say. Now, these numbers are always overblown, right? I don't know exactly how many people are going to work uh, at the Intel facility. Uh, I know the numbers for uh, some of the other things that are going in there, but uh, the Intel is going to be pretty large. It looks pretty big. Um, uh, my, my, my facility where I work is actually losing uh, one of our uh, staff department managers to, to uh, that, that company. They actually are They've come to town and they've begun um, poaching people from other, uh, you know, industries and stuff like that. So it's going to be a pretty big deal. But, you know, Kevin asked on, you know, uh, Alex's show, like, where is Joe Biden's credit for that? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if. Uh, you know, uh, Phil would be calling up and saying, you know, look at this thing that Trump did, you know, they used to make all these chips in China and now. Uh, Trump got it brought back. Well, no, he didn't. You know, he didn't. He didn't do anything in the four years that he was there with that. Um, I mean, he did other things, whatever, fine. But I'm just saying, mm -hmm. we're on the other foot, as it were. You know that there would be a lot of uh, <clears throat> being thrown around. So 
I think that uh, Joe Biden probably does deserve some credit for that. So let's uh, put that tally in, uh, you know, another another victory for him. OK, in the last couple of weeks, last week, we talked a little bit about kind of a good streak that he was on, some good rebounding numbers and some things like that. And this doesn't hurt. And, you know, what was sort of peaceful about it around here today was the fact that he came in and there was a lot of, uh, you know, hugging and uh, shaking of hands among our Republican governor and our Republican senator and our other senator who was a Democrat. And, of course, the president of the United States was a Democrat. And uh, the county commissioners and all these folks up around that area are uh, they're all white. They're all Republicans. You know, I mean, they're all very wealthy people. Um, you know, uh, to describe that area, uh, you know, the, the sort of the founder of that area, I don't know if you know much about him, I guess there was a recent documentary I haven't seen, but the, the big name that always lived in that area and developed it was a, a gentleman named Les Wexner, right? And, you know, Les Wexner was famous for creating or, or not creating, but for buying and then transforming a brand called Victoria's Secret, uh, you know, so that 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 is headquartered in Columbus uh, now. And I, I don't think he owns it anymore, but that's the kind of money that that lives in that community. Um, hey, you know, Johnny. yeah. How, how far, so you're where both sort of manufacturing, right? Where uh, how far away when you say like this is a rich area, how far away are the workers that are going to get from that to work in those areas? Well, Johnstown's pretty small. And it's kind of outside of the town of New Albany is uh, not, it's growing. The thing is, is it's so populated out here um, anymore that there can be people that live, like, for instance, I live in a small farming community where you can buy a home for, you know, $200,000. You can build a new home. You could drive from my house to that facility in, you know, 40 minutes. Mm. Know, maybe 45 so it's not far but there are people that are much closer i mean there are there are other communities like reynoldsburg pickerington uh all these other communities that are uh, affordable middle class people uh 20 minutes away i mean they're they're gonna have plenty of workers i think <laughs> now there was a lot of talk today about how um there's not a lot of affordable housing in the general in the, the right around the town there and that this is going to make that problem much worse. Um, not for the people who own the land or the homes. I mean, they're going to make a lot more money. But yeah, it's, if, you, if you're going to work there for Intel, like on the line, you're not going to be able to afford to live in New Albany. But you couldn't afford to live in New Albany before that. I mean, you know, uh, um, you'll drive by a housing development up there and it'll be like so-and-so home building. Um, homes from the 780s, you know, I mean, like... Yeah. I, if I had seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars, I wouldn't buy a house with it. Uh, you would never see me again. Um, I could snort Percocet up my nose for the rest of my fucking life and live on the road and probably spend a quarter of that. You know, so I mean, uh, I, I have no idea how people spend that kind of money, but I mean, it's a really nice area, but it's 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 just uh it's going to get developed up there pretty big. Um, I'm trying to think of the other manufacturers that were coming to town there. Um, you know, there are five or six others in this huge industrial park. Uh, Amazon is already sort of adjacent, not very far away. Um, uh, you know, there, there are a few others. It's, it's look, it's going to be a really big deal. I mean, it's going to create a lot of jobs. So I think that it's good for the, for the president i mean what well, right kevin i mean you were talking about that on alex's show how you you're kind of surprised oh, boy, because, uh, uh, getting they, more national coverage maybe yeah well weren't there some uh republican friends of ours out there as well that were that were kind of bipartisan out there talking about this too they they made it sound like it was pretty much a bipartisan you know happy happy fizzy party out there yeah, and, it was. Uh, I mean, yeah. So who was who was the Republican out there? I can't remember his name. The governor? I believe it was a governor, yeah. The the governor is uh Mike DeWine. Okay. And so, uh what kind uh, of Rob... flack is he gonna take for getting buddy buddy with Joe Biden now? 
You know, I, I don't know. And I don't know that he cares because he's outgoing, you know. Yeah. He's, he's, you know, he's leaving okay. or not leaving, but I, I, don't, I think he's term limited out or whatever. So he's not running again. And, and, you know, neither is the Republican senator, Rob Portman. You know, Rob Portman is retired. Oh, that's right. It's Portman in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, you know, I haven't really heard much um, because because, look, and this is the thing that we always talk about with politics is they can run their mouth and, and, and all this. But look, at the end of the day, they needed these. They needed this. Right. They, they wanted Intel's money. Sure, I mean, because Intel was supposed to go to Wisconsin, weren't they? I, I don't know. I, I know I there was... They were supposed to go to that big, that big uh, plot out there by uh, Patrick's place. Didn't they have a big plot out there that they were supposed to put a bunch of, bunch of buildings out there? And there was another company, I forgot what it was. It was probably <laughs> several years ago, and Trump was leading the charge for that one, but it never came to fruition. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I mean, I'm sure that there was other uh, was a big electronics company that was supposed to be out there, and I thought Intel was going to be part of it. Yeah, and, and there's still a complex out there, and I thought it was supposed to go out there, but I don't know that it ever did. There's someone else going out there with Intel that is in the electronics industry that's going to go to this campus, um, and I cannot, you know, remember. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a really big deal. You know, there's going to be, you know, there's going to be Intel doesn't need it, but for other people, there's going to be rail service. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's going to be a, a really big deal for manufacturing because you know, look, and I'm you you probably have the same uh, story too. But like when I was a kid, okay, second, third grade, or whatever, you know, in the 1980s, and we lived a little bit south of where we live here in a little town. That's the county seat called uh, Circleville. Okay, it's the name of this little tiny town. It's pretty small, but when I lived there, you could live there and 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 in town, right on the edge. Okay, was was General Electric, was RCA, was Dupont, was PPG, uh, was Georgia Pacific, and now almost all those people are gone. Yeah. PPG and Dupont are still there, but they are only still there because they are similar to my company. And that it is not cost efficient to do what we do in Mexico or China and ship it back. Hmm. If it were, they would do it. Yeah. Okay. But it's not. But a lot of the other people left. RCA, all the electronics people, RCA was down there. General Electric was down there. They all, you know, they all left. And it started when I was young and, and then the Clinton presidency came about. And, you know, all those changes were made with NAFTA and all that. And those jobs just just went away. And then everyone was forced to migrate basically to Columbus, Ohio, in the central Ohio area. And then even a lot of that went away, you know, and it, it moved to a mostly a warehousing uh, region, um, which is huge here. But everyone knows that warehousing does not pay wage labor what manufacturing does um it just it doesn't uh so some of that has started to come back here and intel is a big big part of that um you know well intel's been on the move for a while to find a a big big place to settle because they were here in santa clara in the silicon valley but they had a little place here a little place here i mean when i first started with intel they were in trailers over here on the Montague Expressway. They were in trailers over off of Bowers Avenue. There was five or six trailers and I was I was delivering stuff to them when they were in portable trailers. And then they got buildings and then they moved into bigger buildings. And then they had fabs right on Montague Expressway. And I, was, I went to all of those and, and Intel was one of our biggest customers when I was working for Air Products over here. And they got bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden they started shutting down their buildings. Now they have nothing here. Basically, they've got D2 Fab, which is which was one of their biggest fabs over here at 101 and, and uh, Montague Expressway. Yeah. That now is basically shut down. It's just a research place. Yeah. And when they the shut Museum. down, that's about when we shut down. They and have a museum. The Intel Museum that? is there. The what's Intel that? Museum is there. Who's there? The Intel Intel Museum. Yeah, the museum is there. That's about it. <laughs> And I used to take all the Chinese visitors over there when they came into town. That's where they told me, oh, take them over to the museum at Intel. And they just loved it. 
But then they were they moved up to Hillsboro, Oregon, which is where the big fabs were. They had four or five fabs up there. And then now those are starting to shut down. And that's probably, I would guess, well, between Arizona, that was their other big one. I remember when they opened huge fabs down there. And literally, when I was working eh, six, seven years ago, they had Chandler, Arizona. Chandler, Arizona had this huge fab they were going up. And right in the middle of construction, they went out there and told everybody, put a lock on the on the gate. They put a <laughs> lock on the gate and they shut everything down. Right in the yeah. middle of construction, they shut it all down. And they moved everything and put everything up in Hillsboro and said, we're going to finish up doing here and you know put a hold on everything. And that's when D2 in Santa Clara shut down and they did everything out of Hillsboro and it kind of just shut, you know, shrunk down for a while. Now, all of a sudden, they're going to do this Ohio thing. Everything went overseas, of course. Now they're going to do this Ohio thing. So maybe they're actually starting to bring stuff back and do it in the U.S., which would be a good thing. Yeah. So yeah. That's, what, that's what Trump always said, right? Bring manufacturing back. And I don't yeah. know how much was successful. Well, now Biden's doing that. He's bringing it back. And what? where's all the fly? You know, where's all the happy fizzy party? Nobody's saying shit. Yeah. Do you think some you know, of that from the queen? <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's being diverted by the queen. No, I don't think so. It shouldn't be. You know, we should be, you know, over overriding all the queen shit because he did this. Yeah. You know? But nobody's going to say nothing about it. Yeah, it's, it's been a, it yeah, it's been a long time coming. I mean, they actually broke ground on this months ago. But they waited to do the ceremony because Intel was pretty insistent that until the Chips Act, you know, that congressional act that they right. passed to buy all oh, these yeah. chips and all that, they they said, you know, look, we don't we don't want to you know we don't want to pop any champagne until, um, until it, uh, you know, is done until we know Which this is fine. Is it. You know, all oh, right, right, you know, and and the White House is okay with that. So they showed up today, and you know, there was equipment moving dirt and everything. They did a little fake, you know deal and all that which yeah, was you know stuff. it was fine but but the fact of the matter is it 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 is a uh, i guess a good move i mean look there there are some people this is a little further away from me but I, i'm a little anti-growth in my area because enough people already live here and i don't like the little tiny town that we live in i don't want it any bigger okay it, and it's already too big i mean i i'm sorry whoever this offends i'm actually i'm not sorry i don't care i don't want it any bigger i don't want a fucking panera bread OK, I, I don't want any goddamn yogurt shops. I, we don't need when I was We're going young, through the same thing down here, too. There, there, when I was young, there was there was a Dairy Queen and that was it. And somehow or another. None of us died and we were all fine. And you could drive to the Dairy Queen and you didn't have to go through any traffic lights and didn't take a fucking hour. But the shit's out of control now. And there's really, you know, there's nothing I can do to stop it. You know, it's just uh, my wife and I, when when things are ready, I, I, I'm i prepared to move to like, you know, Kansas or something. I mean, you know, I mean, because I, I that's I just don't like populated areas. But but if for overall, there's no doubt that it's good economically and it's good for the people, you know, that live here. And and my understanding is that. These are pretty good paying jobs. I mean, uh, the person, you know, the, for example, that is going to exit, you know, my company and go to work for them. Uh, my understanding is that the salary offer that was made was rather uh, was good. I mean, it was it was like, a, you know, we we couldn't, uh, you know, we, we, could, we couldn't touch it. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, and he, he makes that already anyway. I mean, I know yeah. he doesn't know what I make and everything. So it so it has to be, yeah. So you know it was great. I mean, you know, so they're coming to town, throwing a little money around, you know, and, and that'll that stuff will calm down over time. But they're gonna be there for a long time. It's it's big industry. Um, and it's gonna like you, I was saying, there's more coming, you know, to follow that. You know, the the uh the coatings company that's coming is going to have a couple hundred people. When it's all said and done, a large facility. Is Bear going to be a manufacturer or DSC? They're going to have both on one campus. Oh. So that's what I'm saying. You know, it's going to be a couple hundred, uh, you know, people. And that's part and look, of you guys. I, I, I know what, 
What's that? Is Bear part of you guys? No. Oh, okay. No, they're they're uh, they're the opposite. So, um, but I know what their wages and things will be because you know I know like sort of you know like what we uh, offer and things like that. I mean, these are good paying jobs where you know middle class people uh, who live in an area like where I live can you know, drive 25 or 30 minutes to work and have a job that can pay, you know, a good salary um, and support them. And there should be some credit given to the Biden administration because those jobs were taken away. And this is nothing with Trump. I mean, you know, he, he did say that he wanted those jobs back. I'm just saying he wasn't as successful but those jobs disappeared under Clinton, uh, you know, Bush, Obama. Um, yeah. This was not, you know, anything to do with a, a party or anything. This was domination by big business, yeah. Yeah. you know, not by presidents. Right. Um, so it's good to see, you know, if there is a positive uh, after effect of <laughs> COVID-19, for example, maybe it is that there are some companies um that that went through experiences where they said wow you know maybe this overseas stuff uh isn't a, as worth it as we thought that it was because mm -hmm. even home, some yeah. of the even some of the ones who don't make stuff over there are so heavily reliable or, or rely on others so heavily like mine that they couldn't get what they needed to do what they needed to do here right. you know and it it went you know right on down the line and it was, you know, it cost people a lot of money. Well, I think it'd be real interesting to see if steel, things like steel come back. Yeah. Because we're getting, you know, the commodities that go that are coming from there that used to come from here. Right. Those things will be important coming back to the United yeah. States actually be right. manufactured here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a big deal because steel is expensive now and it's coming from overseas you can cut down all that shipping costs because tariffs have gone through the roof because of our friend and you know you bring that back here there's your reason you're cutting out all that shipping cost and and some of that shipping now has become uh far less reliable than it was before i mean some you wait months now to get containers a containers used to be cheap containers yeah. used to be cheap i used to you know i ship containers and mm -hmm. containers used to be a dime a dozen now they're yeah, not I, look i i entered some paperwork for a shipping container that we received at my facility uh, a day or two ago and it had left the netherlands in like uh mid july or something like that wow. we just got it. i mean you know so uh, well, you used to be able to, to ship a container for eight thousand dollars, and it would get there in less than three weeks. Right. Less you had weeks. the whole boat. Yeah. Now you have to find a whole boat if you yeah. want to get it when you want it, and it costs you forty thousand dollars a container. Yeah. So that, look, these things are good, and you know, Joe Biden does deserve some credit for it. I mean, you know, look, if Donald Trump had done it, I would say that he deserves some credit for it. Right. I mean, I, I'm seriously, I, I don't care. I mean, some positive action can be recognized. You, political party, you know, notwithstanding. Uh, Alan? Do you have a big Home Depot presence in your neighborhood? Because I, uh, believe, I believe Bear is a Home Depot brand. Correct. Yeah, it is. Well, it's, it's not a Home Depot brand. It is, they are the main sourcer of coatings to the home Depot. oh so they don't own bear uh no okay, okay. so um you know but uh their exclusivity uh, correct that is the that is their main source of you know where they uh market and and uh sell their product you know right, right. um they are not uh they are not really a competitor to uh my company for example uh simply because they don't do any sort of chemical coatings or anything like that uh a uh, uh, bear manufactures latex house paint and indoor and outdoor latex paint um sure williams uh ppg 
and uh, very few others manufacture uh, those very things that they sell in their own stores, but also have huge, enormous wings of chemical coatings that go to uh, everything else. My plant, for example, makes almost nothing that you, you, any of you would buy. Um, it makes almost exclusively uh, coatings that go to someone else who makes something that you would buy and they, they, they place like, it. Like we, paint for a car? Uh, yeah, we do make automotive, um, you know, we're, we we're, we make for everybody. I mean, you know, I, I won't say too much because I'm, I don't know how much I really it's should cool. say we about are. what my plant does, but we, we are a, uh, you know, a, a, a supplier to, to industry basically. Uh, we used to well, use your coatings for our, uh, our tanks, our nitrogen tanks. Yeah, I mean, we make a lot of uh, stuff like that. A lot of industrial um, and military. We're a huge supplier <clears> of <throat> the United States really? military. So, you know, it's a, um, it's a big deal. It's, it's good that that stuff, you know, is coming back. Uh, you know, Columbus was, um, it now has a huge Amazon presence. I mean, there's like six or seven uh amazon dscs here now that that are um you know a lot of jobs and look i know there's some problems with uh amazon with some of their pay and some of the way that they push their workers and things like that and and i i get that that's a fair conversation but look they are jobs i mean you know <laughs> you know and, and you know, that's, that, that can be recognized i mean but but that stuff is is like retail and fulfillment, all that. But it is it is good to see manufacturing starting to return. I mean, we look, we need to make things in America. I never disagreed with Donald Trump on that issue. And look, the Democratic senator from the state of Ohio, Sherrod Brown, never disagreed with Donald Trump on that issue. I've said before, people are probably tired of hearing it. That I thought one of the mistakes that the Clinton campaign made was not finding someone like Sherrod Brown to put on that ticket who would have been from a state like Ohio that they needed, okay, to carry. And he would have put it in play because he would have spread his message on tariffs and manufacturing and things like that, that Hillary Clinton just was not good at selling. But Sherrod Brown is a blue collar guy who is good at going out and interfacing with those type of people. I mean, you know, with the people who work at manufacturing facilities and things like that. Unions. I mean, you know, there's a lot of automotive manufacturing here in Ohio. Honda is huge outside the Columbus area. And, you know, Honda has their own supply apparatus here. In other words, <clears throat> Honda came to town and then all these people who make things for Honda came to town and build up and, <clears throat> Shit, tons of people work there. I mean, Sherrod, and, you know, and almost all of them are in a union, and Sherrod Brown is very good at working with those people. They're big fans of his. It's how he gets elected in this state, even though the last few elections, they've continued to keep their other Republican senator, and they've gone, you know, Trump crazy around here. But he still manages to get elected. And, and it's because he talked about politics like that, and he stayed away from social politics and and stuff that i'm not saying it doesn't matter but i'm saying it, democrats allow it to become the dominant issue and it drags down their party and their ticket and then they lose elections and then the republican party laughs and says hey, we got you again because the republicans don't do anything about any of that stuff either because a lot of it's not a real problem you know i mean he's not going to get in an argument for days on end about a caravan coming from Venezuela and all mm. that because that shit's fake, yeah. you know. And he lets you say your crazy shit, and then he says, "Oh no, by the way, I'm gonna make some jobs for some union people." And he gets back on the message, you know. He, he doesn't get, you know, drugged into that kind of stuff. And the the guy that's running uh, to replace Rob Portman here in Ohio, which is Tim Ryan, is is almost mirror image of of Sherrod Brown, which is why I think he will be successful, and it is why he is being successful. Mm right now against jd vance or uh steve vance or, or jim vance or whatever his name is but whatever his name is <laughs> i endorse him whatever 
you know, the, 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 the Trump endorsed, you know, J.D. Vance. So when a guy like Tim Ryan is beating someone like that, then how much how much power does Trump still carry? And that's a good thing to look at because, you know, you, you would think that he would be successful here because Trump won Ohio two times by, you know, a very, very good margin. I don't remember, but I, I want to say it was like seven or eight points. I mean, it was a it was, you know, it was a decent amount. And look, this is a state that I think went for Obama twice, went for Clinton twice. I mean, up until, you know, 10 years ago was was pretty solid, um, you know, it could be counted on. So there are ways for Democrats in these Midwest industrial regions to make headway. And part of that headway includes saying, here's a company like Intel. It's going to bring couple thousand jobs and you know you can come up here having you know basically just graduated high school and you can just work in one of our rooms and we'll train you what to do and you can make 75 or eighty thousand dollars a year you know get some overtime stuff like that and you'll get some pretty good health care and, and you and you'll get a you know a, a, a 401k i mean you know benefits that people need you know and, yeah. and all that so that's that's good news and Joe Biden deserves some credit for it. He talked about it in the State of the Union. And now he's come to town today to kind of top it off. So has anyone seen a poll of his approval rating lately? I mean, I, I don't think I've seen anything for a two or three weeks and it had ticked up. So I would expect the next one to come out. It, it's probably going to tick up some more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was in the what, the low to mid 40s? Yeah, they're, they're still saying it's in the low 40s still. But that was. <clears throat> So if he approaches if he approaches the high forties or low fifties around the midterm elections, that you know that's probably a good sign. And we talked last week about you know hypothetically. I mean, look, what if he does, and the and and the Democrats manage to maintain control maintain control of you know both houses of Congress, you know, you know, or, or both 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 chambers, you know, the House and the Senate, and and then he's back to that sort of approval rating, you know. Yeah, the White Sox beat us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's on my television. Yeah. So yeah, the. Uh, so what you know what happens then? He's got a real decision to make, right? Does he? Does he think he can ride that wave and keep going and going and going, or does he step aside? You know. Yeah, that 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 gets scary then when if his approval rating goes up, yeah. then is he going to think, well, oh, I can run again? And I right. Yeah, I mean that's. I'm sure that's the inner turmoil for him I'm, and, you know, uh, and for people like me and for the, the Democratic Party as a whole, because it's very difficult to abandon something that it just made you successful. Right. You know, I mean, mm. in, you know, there's always that thing in sports. Well, you know, it's working for us and we're winning, but there are all these signs that point to. But if you don't change Others are going to adapt before you do, and it's going to not be winning anymore. And then you're going to be behind when it happens. I mean, it's such a tough, you know, it's such a tough call. Uh, and I get it, but I, so did, have you seen the headlines that his, his, his good friend, uh, Trump's good friend, Steve Bannon was arrested again, you know, for, I don't know, the fourth or fifth time in his life. Yeah. <laughs> They keep showing pictures of him in cuffs or something too. So Power yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. I, have yet, I have not begun to fight yet as he's walking away in cuffs and getting shoved into a closet. Oh really? <laughs> it as a, yeah. It's a badge of honor to him. He loves it. Yeah, he but there's no, there's no Trump. There's no Trump to yank him out this time. You know, nope. this well, guy's the, stone and all those guys were going, and they knew he was going to get back out. Well, yeah, it is true more. that he is in a spot now where if he goes to a trial and he is found guilty, that that's it. There's no one that is in the in the in the state that he's in and all that. No, that's going to be it. No one's coming to his aid now. So yeah. his posturing uh, is what it is. And I'm sure in the back of his mind that he has perhaps finally realized that he might actually go to prison. The president can only pardon for federal crimes, right? Correct. Yeah, I mean, he's and not so he's not going to be able to. This is the state of New York, he's right? He's been charged with state crimes in the state of New York. That is yeah. correct. Good place to get, get it. Go ahead, Jeff. 
Uh, we, my big question is, is Trump ever get it? I mean, I think that, I think it's going to be nearly impossible for the federal government not to charge him with some sort of a crime over this latest deal. Hmm. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know how long that's going to take. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, they are just trying to make it as solid as possible so that they do it. They know it's going to stick. And that's I mean, I, I think that after the midterm elections. He's probably going to have to end up being indicted for some because I don't know how you can. I mean, I just I just don't. I mean, if anybody else had documents they were not supposed to have, and if they were even in the same stratosphere of the type of material that has been rumored you know for it to be then you would be in major trouble and you know the only reason that a person would possess these um you know and, and they really wouldn't be able to prove this and this is why it doesn't matter if you have them you have them it doesn't matter why you had them you had them but the reason someone would take something like that is is to sell it, <laughs> to sell the information that is yeah. contained in it, you know, um, which is also against the law. It's it's espionage. Now, I have no idea if it would go that far because you you would never be able to prove something like that without some sort of, you know, hard evidence. I mean, you know, uh, you, you can't prove what it was in his mind. I mean, if if you don't have an email <clears throat> or a tape or something where someone says, you know, yeah, give us the document, we'll give you a dollar or whatever. It's not gonna, that's not gonna matter. But it doesn't matter if they don't, because just possessing them is against the law. I mean, you know, yeah, you know, possessing them in the manner and in the place and in the time that he did um, is against the law. And, you know, he hasn't denied that fact, by the way. I mean, He's made no denial that the documents were not there. I mean, oh, he tells you right. everything. Right. I mean, so look, they were there. I mean, <laughs> so uh, he, he doesn't have any sort of real defense. Um, so like Kevin said, they're, they're, they're going to sort out all this, uh, you know, minutia to it, get the special master thing sorted out are they going to have one are they not they've appealed it take another week or two i guess to sort that out get that all done however it turns out they're going to go through that process they're going to eventually take their time whether it's quicker or slower based on this special master deal they'll go through every document they're going to catalog it they're going to do their whole thing and then at some point when it's all done they're going to say okay this is what we found yeah. and the investigation uh, they've gotten, you know, we've gotten some testimony from people with his own organization stuff, and we can now prove that not only did he have them, but yes, that there was no possible reason for him to have possessed them. And it was not by accident because he was informed multiple times that we knew that he had them. And each time he just didn't respond or he would give some back and say, oh, there you go. There's all of them. And that happened multiple times. So they have a, I think they're going to have a good paper trail. Uh, you know, they're going to, they're going to have eyewitness testimony. They obviously have someone working for them. They're going to have the evidence that they gathered, uh, you know, through their warrant. And then they're going to have him running his mouth. So, uh, you know, decent evidence. It looks like even some of his lawyers have lied for him. So, you know, um, it's going to end up, you know, pretty bad for him I, think, I mean i think giuliani's gonna go to prison soon well it's possible i mean you know Trump it's not like not lawyers for him haven't gone to prison before you know mm. his first one is still in prison so yep. uh, you know i mean this is the kind of person that he is those are the kinds of people that he surrounds himself with and, and connects himself with so look this is on him i, I mean what do you, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think? I mean, I've, I've talked enough. Go ahead. I mean, you, you tell me what you think is going to happen with with this or what you want to happen or don't want to happen. I mean, you know, if if anybody wants to say what they think about that, go ahead. 
I think it's a hard, difficulty project to get him regardless. And uh, I, I, you know, I always think about maybe somebody will come over and knock him out. And, <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's but it's going to stink because he's got protection on that. So. It, it's but it's such a politically. Uh, it's just a it's a stick of political dynamite. You know, <laughs> it it really is. And it's going to go off and hurt people that it shouldn't hurt. I mean, you know, because instead of doing the right thing. Instead of the Republican Party, or at least its prominent members doing the right thing and saying, you know what, he's not president anymore. We don't want him back. This is our chance to fucking bury him. Let's just get on TV and let's just do the right thing and say, you know what? Yeah, he shouldn't have had this stuff. This was garbage. We're on your side. Just get rid of him. You know, help us get rid of him, please. And, and do it. They won't do it. I mean, oh, that's a big problem right there. Right. Yeah. That's that is the problem. Well, so, I heard I don't some think... guy talking just yesterday, and the thing he says, well, I'm not that happy with him, uh, the president, the ex-president. He goes, but, you know, I really liked him a lot, and I was very happy with him, but if, you know, if he's going to run again, eh, I might vote for him again. Why not? He's probably right. less than any Democrat. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, well, first of all, I don't think tr Trump's ever going to say see a day in jail. And that, so that's that is not for me. That's not important. What's important for me is that it's recognized that he broke a law seriously. That he's indicted. At least that he's brought to trial. For sure, brought to trial. He has to be brought to trial. If he's not brought to trial for this. Yeah. Everything, is a, everything is a joke because now anybody can get away with anything if you have, if you have enough power in the government or money. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he has to, he has to be indicted and it has to be, he has to be brought to trial. Yeah, I mean, I don't uh, really I, care I, if he goes to jail. I don't care. I just want but, the but law I to do the care. right thing. I do care if he goes to jail because he's the he's an example and he's. He's gotten away with this shit for so much and so long in his life mm -hmm. that he needs to see some steel in front of his face. I agree. Do you think he ever will? Go? I, I just I don't know that, that he ever will, but he. Yeah. Needs to. I just. I just. My hope is that we just see some form of justice that people can understand. That you, you do the you do something like this. You don't get away with it. Well, I don't. I don't think that's that would be getting away with it if you didn't go into the, into the camp. I, I know. Yeah. So I, I, know. I think I, I'm with Kevin. I think the only way that this is going to work is to lock him up. Yeah. He he will be he will be he will be considered a winner if he doesn't go into the camp. I just don't ever see that happening because I, whoever would have, I have a hard time seeing it too. I don't. Yeah. I don't disagree with you. I have a hard time seeing it, but I. Yeah. Think it has to happen for it to be a complete, uh, complete justice. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you literally have media, millions. Of, you know, you, you'd have millions of people going insane, uh, causing havoc in the streets. If we just indict him, you know, I, I it's, kind, it's kind of like when when we tried to get him out of office by impeaching him. Okay, we did it. It it hurt him a little bit, and then he bounced back. So we've got to go through the whole thing and he's got to be arrested and incarcerated. There has to be some kind of humiliation. No, that would be humiliating. publicly. That would Something be public. publicly humiliating. Being incarcerated would be. Public. I don't know that that would humiliate him. I think he would no, walk I'm... around with a badge on his shoulder, not going to jail. He'd be, a, it would be a badge. He got away with it. Yeah. Yeah. I got right, a little right, right. stick on his shoulder and he'd be walking around going, say, yeah. I'm not in jail, am I? Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's terrible. I just don't see. I don't see a, a solution to this thing. That's what I mean. I mean, it's it, there's yeah. almost no solution to it. Yeah. Josh, is there anybody who, in the history of other presidents, 
that had done anything somewhat similar. I mean, I, I compare it Jefferson to Jefferson Davis, a long, <laughs> a long story and a, and a <laughs> kind of a shitty example is when I my leg got screwed up, I sued my doctor. Mm-hmm. My doctor was very prominent, and very he worked on a lot of famous people, and I sued him, and I started it. You know, I'm going to take him to the count to the can. I'm going to I'm going to nail his ass. I'm going to take <laughs> money. I'm going to get him, you know, marked up on the medical board and everything else. I went after him for a quarter million dollars. And this is going to affect me for the rest of my life. And it does. It's still affecting me. And this happened in 2004. And I walked out of there with shit and he's still practicing. Mm-hmm. I got it. I got a mark on his board on, a, you know, his medical board. But apparently a few other people did that before me, too. Mm-hmm. And he's yeah. still cutting people open. Right. Yeah. And so what, is, what does that do to him, except that he's got malpractice insurance, they just gave me my money and said, bye bye, I'm going to go back and do it, do this again tomorrow. There's all kinds of justice in this world. It's bullshit. Yep, I agree. And it's exactly what's going on with him on a, on a, a humongously larger scale. Yeah, look, I agree that it's they're in an impossible, you know, situation. I mean, but that's the thing is that the <clears throat> evidence and the situation is is going to end up being so clear that they're they're going to have, you know, nearly no choice but to file the indictment and then just let whatever happens. I mean, if they have a trial, um, I mean, all this is way off, but I'm just saying, you know, in a hypothetical deal. If they did, and, and you know, he's he's going to demand a, a trial. He's not going to, you know, plead guilty, right? I mean, right. You know, I mean, look, I would agree that if they did that, that in, in a country where basically twenty percent of the people are are never ever ever going to submit to any sort of any negativity for him whatsoever, you're going to have to make a jury up out of twelve people. It's going to be nearly impossible to. Mm. not have one of those 12 who will just say, I, I don't care. I don't care. You know, it's, you're never going to get that verdict. Mm-hmm. Right. But that's all the justice department can do. I mean, at the end of the day, justice, just like the power in this country will still derive mm-hmm. from and reside with the people. Right. And right. if the people do not come through, they will have made a mistake. We, the people, but but that's the way that it is. I mean, that's that's our our system and all we can do. But I, I can understand Ray's point that if if that were to happen, at least that happened. I mean, that's because that's that's all that we can. You that's, know, that's what I was trying to say. That's that's, that that's say what's better than I do. No, I, that's, you a, know, that's exactly what I meant. Yeah. No, I mean, at least at least the process. Di- Something happened, you know. It's like Trump right. didn't co- you walk around all cocky. See, I won and everything. Mm-hmm. But history will say, you know, the president was indicted, was found guilty of whatever. Now, whatever punishment he doesn't get or get doesn't mm-hmm. get or he does get, you know, that's out of our hands. Yeah, yeah. because we we yeah. can't, you know, we don't we don't have any control over that. If 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 one of us okay. is not on. A jury to decide that we have no real no, power in that case and even if one of us was we are one of a group you know and and, and if and if the law states we have to have a, a, a unanimous verdict well all well, we can do is make our our vote you yeah, know all they're, gonna, all they're gonna need to do is find on every one of these juries find somebody that sympathizes with them and they'll end up with hung juries yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's no way that, uh, you know, there's no way to determine what would happen there. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. But I, I don't lose faith in the American system because the system in that case operated. The people chose not to 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 put out a punishment. Well, then the people the people chose that. Now, yeah. there may be a, an overwhelming amount of people that you know, disagree with that decision, but that is what it is. And, you know, and then the country moves forward from there, you know, like it always says, I mean, it won't be the, I mean, you know, I mean, look, listen, you know, 
black people in the South were lynched, and it was obvious who did it, and those folks didn't go to jail. I mean, yeah, right. Right? I it's, mean, just, it's just important to me, it's just important to me that, that, that our justice system works, and history, it goes down in history that he was, that the truth came out. Right, and that's, and that's very possible. Just, just like yeah. now, we here and historians can look back and say in the 1960s or whatever that black people were lynched in the South. And there were cases where prosecutors put people on trial and those people were found innocent. Well, I can't blame that prosecutor, but history can look back and say, but that prosecutor did all he could do. He fought for slain black men or women in a courtroom full of whites where he knew he would lose, where he knew he had no chance, where he knew he probably would put his career in danger or his life in danger, but he did, you know, it was he then, okay? But they did it anyway because they had integrity. And now we can look at it 30 years later, 40 years later, whatever, and say, you know, that prosecutor was a, a person of integrity. They did their job. Just because the people didn't come through on the other side, can't make them. Yeah, That's and it's, the, just, it's the same thing as if you're cho choosing to go to trial at all. Correct. Yeah, you know, Alan. So I I think that times have changed since we, the blacks and stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go on something here that that I know something about. Cops in this country are very seldomly convicted. George Floyd, that incident changed things, put a lot of cops in this country on notice that yeah. times have changed. If you're charged with a heinous crime like that, you can and probably will go to prison. Yeah, no. yeah. I think times change. But you know, and that's 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 sort of the point is, you know, sometimes you get uh some of these past cases and 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 the white police officer, whatever, was found innocent and the and the family is on television and saying, oh, you know, justice wasn't done. And, I, you know, and I've heard them sometimes before sort of blame the prosecution. And, and I'm thinking, well, justice was done. It might not have been served, but right. it was done. A prosecutor said that was a crime. And then he had those people arrested and he had them taken to a courthouse and he had them tried for a crime. And the, and the, and the, and the people on the jury didn't didn't find him guilty i mean what more can the prosecutor do right. <laughs> yeah you know, i'm just double, i'm just saying double, if, double if jeopardy. Drive, right if you drive down the road and you get a speeding ticket the officer had you speeding he wrote you the ticket he did your job and you went to court and you fought it and you you got out of the ticket well i mean police officer didn't do anything <laughs> I mean, right. you know, the law didn't Literally. do anything wrong Literally. It, it just there is there's no system of, of 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 justice that can prohibit that and be perfect you know and yet still maintain us in a in a in a, in a free society and in, in a democracy you know uh so that's that's what we can do and that's what's available to us i think that it will be difficult to have this this current news with trump just go away. I mean, I find it hard to believe that like a year from now, we'll sit here on somebody's show and they'll be like, and we'll we'll be saying, whatever happened to that case about the documents is Mar -a -Lago, I, I never heard any more about that. I mean, I you know, I I don't think that's what'll happen. I don't think no. it'll just be, well, they they I guess after they got them back, it they just said, fuck it. I mean, I don't think that's what's gonna happen because. There's enough information out there now that has made it well known that he possessed them, but he had no legal right to possess them, so on and so forth, like we covered earlier. And it's an it's obviously it's a violation of the law. And and they're not prosecuting him, or at least making that attempt, you know, is clearly gonna indicate that people could get away with stuff like that. And it and it will open a, a, a bad door. You know, so I think that that just letting it go uh, isn't isn't going to happen. 
and I, and, I, and I don't imagine that you're gonna that and I don't think you're gonna see some sort of you know like Richard Nixon moment here where the the current president says yeah this is we really don't want any more trouble we just want this all over with right you know because that, I think that was different that happened that president got caught and he left he was banished his reputation was ruined he was never coming back he was done and then gerald ford said okay good we want to end it right here but yeah, that and he, is, and he, trump isn't saying you know what i'm going to move to the bahamas and no one's ever going to hear from me again no he wants back in the game right he wants back in control he wants some more of your money he wants some more of your 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 personal freedom you know what i mean they have to prohibit that, you know? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He didn't, you know, Nixon got on a plane and went to California and, and, and just basically left public life for the most part. I mean, he, then he sort of, at least for a good while he did too, and then he kind of came back and, you know, he started to write some books and he would give some speeches, yeah. but he didn't even want to talk about Watergate. Right. I mean, he didn't even want no. to talk, about it, you know, he would get mad. That's all they ever want to talk about. It's like a Watergate. You know, he, he didn't even want to talk about it. But that's not what Trump's doing. Trump wants to talk about this. He wants to talk about it every day. He wants to talk about it all day, every day, Mm -hmm. so that he can get people on his side riled up and they'll give him some money. More money, yeah. And that's the constant game. It's a game. He's a a complete sociopath. And he's he's a president and he wants to be again. And that's scary stuff. It's right. It's, It's an old. It's an old game that's been run for, you know, yeah. hundreds of years, if not longer um, than that. And and so he wants back in the game. So that's what I'm saying is I it's not the same as Nixon or whatever. You know, Joe Biden isn't going to say, uh, you know, oh, I hereby pardon you. It's, it's no way. On. No, because Trump wants back. So the evidence is there. You know, the, the circumstances there, the need is there, you know. There is an immediate injury to the American people, to the American system of government uh, that can be done here by not prosecuting this crime. You know, because that's what a prosecutor would, would have to consider is if I don't prosecute this crime that I know is a crime, if I use my discretion in that way, what consequences could come of that? And there could be consequences of that. Huge, I mean, you know, huge consequences. Any, the, it's from crime now on, yeah. yeah. From, so from now on, anybody could take, you know, what they want with them on the way out the door, you know, Alan. I'm sorry. My <laughs> camera. camera. OK, no, no, that's fine. You know, <laughs> AB will probably be back in a minute anyway, because it's, it's, it's one o'clock. But, you know, it's just that's the thing is, you know, if, if I, I could maybe get behind a, 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 a severing of all this, if, if Trump were openly saying, you know, I, I want I want out. And I'm done with this, and and I'll go away, and I'll stay away. Mm-hmm. But he's he's not he's not saying that. He's not going to. You know. I think that that's where you, you bring up the point of what is he doing with his documents? That's he he's milking all his people for every yeah. dime he can. So that's what? Exactly what he's, he's not going to try to find more money in those, right? Yeah, and it's not it's not unheard of. I mean, listen, this is exactly what his buddy Steve Bannon is going to go to trial for, right? which is telling people there's this huge problem. And if you give me this money, I'm going to take care of that problem. And then yeah. people gave him that money and he didn't use it for that. Matter of fact, the evidence shows that he made no effort whatsoever to do that. I mean, it's, you know, and mm-hmm. nowadays when you have uh, organizations like 501 cs and all these types of charities and all these types of things, there are so many regulations and paper trails and all that. And and my understanding from this case is that almost none of that is there, or what is there is is thought to be fraudulent, or 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 uh, incorrect. Mm-hmm. So that's that's how you make a fraud case, you know. I mean, that's that's what happened there, and that's what's going to get him in trouble. So that's the. It's not a, a far cry to to see Trump doing the same thing. I mean, this is what all the people in his administration do. You know, I mean. You at least, you know, his old attorney general, Bill Barr, is running around and, and is slowly but surely bringing himself to saying, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what he's doing. I mean, it, you know, so there's that. Yeah, you had fun. 
I, I think so. You'll have to ask everybody here, but I, you I'm guys good. have fun. Yeah. 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 Look He's for a way to kind of uh, give him a slot every right. week, but I don't know exactly how to pull it off yet. How about how about Monday and Tuesday after Jack's show? No, don't don't make suggestions. We'll figure this out. Okay. I can't stand <laughs> that. You just asked. I didn't say I'm asking. Never mind. Alan. Okay, never mind. <laughs> No, I mean, it really works really well, and I would like to see it continue. It's a question of how we do it, you know. Every yes, Friday. Uh, because I want it I'm, something sorry, that is not exhaustive to me, to me, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, 1 a.m. or 1 a.m., right? Yeah, it's a good, intelligent uh, hour of, of, of talk, you know. Uh, I'm just and, waking uh, up. Huh? I'm just waking up. You're just waking up. Oh, well. So NPR-ish. We'll give you your show. We're not going to broadcast it, but we'll give you. you oh, what about what about Charlene? <laughs> Charlene and Alan's show. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Charlene, has been, Charlene has actually been texting me saying, I guess I'm not allowed into the show, huh? I, I didn't see the 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 pop-up. I, I don't know. Uh, no, you didn't either. see it? Oh, okay. It's not my business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's. Uh, you some know, I mean, uh, 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 Josh, uh, it's his show. He can put on who he wants to put on. Right. Yeah. Well, it wasn't that. I mean, I I see it up there at the top now, but I missed it earlier. So yeah. Yeah, um, I think Charlene would have been a disturbance to this little gathering here. You know. It, it was funny because I tried to get onto this show, but while I was trying to do that, at the very beginning, I clicked on what I saw on YouTube, but it was the other show, and I saw Charlene. On. I was like, oh, no. but it was a recording of earlier. A recording so. of earlier. <laughs> yeah. Hey, good job, oh, Josh. Sure. Yeah, very good, Josh. Oh, I like that. That kind of talk sometimes. It's good to yeah, get some knowledge. Good stuff, Josh. Good job. Yeah, we'll do it again uh, next week, I guess, because Jack will still be off. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I would imagine I should be available. All of you Who's have that a night. Everybody All wave right. goodbye. Have See you all later. Bye. Yeah. Bye now. Okay.